Oh shit. Time for anonymous violence. This mission now, starts with your uh, aircraft on the runway, ready for takeoff. Yeah. You may fly the plane route or just explore the area. There are no threats. I'm sorry. I always, I, I whenever I can get out of making a, uh, I reset my position here. Whenever I can get out of making a mission for myself, I just use one of the instant action missions I do. And uh, then Wags talks over to me. Wags, I think you're super fucking cool. If you're ever watching my videos, I don't know. But if you are, give me a shout out, man. I think you're fucking baller. Anyway, welcome to my video on uh, dark wizardry or even advanced, even more advanced A10 tips. Um, basically, what I did for this video was I sat down and I read all 682 goddamn pages of the A10's flight manual. And I also then went and read uh, Chuck's guide. And I've gleaned some things from it that maybe you didn't know, maybe you did know. I don't know. I've made some notes here for myself that I can read through the nose hole in my VR headset. I've read over them one by one, and maybe uh, you learn a thing or two. Maybe you fucking don't. Maybe you're better than me. I don't know. If you're better than me, fuck you. I don't give a shit. Anyway, uh, today I am drinking, uh, let's see, God, this is Old Elk Four Grain uh, Master Distiller. It tastes kind of like, it tastes more like whiskey than it does bourbon, actually. Um, I bought this in Nashville. Um, I was at a speakeasy called the Patterson House. A uh, really cool speakeasy. If you're in Nashville, go check out the Patterson House. And um, on my way out, uh, a girl, a bartender stopped me and she asked, she told me, she's like, hey, if you're, you know, I heard you're looking for bourbons, if you want check out this place called Cork Dorks in downtown Manhattan, and uh, they've got a good selection. So the next morning, I went out to Cork Dorks. I took a walk. It was like a mile from my hotel and found a couple of bottles. I got a, a two more bottles of company distilling or distillery. Um, they're delicious, and I missed that. You can only find those in Nashville. And then I found a bottle of this master distiller four grain, and I, I do love Old Elk. I kind of simp Old Elk, so I picked the Old Elk up. It's pretty good. I'd recommend it. Go find you a bottle. I think it's a hundred bucks, which is a little steep for a bottle of bourbon. But uh, I mean, Old Elk's good. So if the C-130 wants to take off, he's going to have to fucking wait. Sorry, I'm rambling. Anyway, let's get on with it. All right. What do I have here? Okay, so first things first, we're going to change our loadout. And that's not the trick. <laughs> Did you know you can change your weapons? No, I'm kidding. Um, the trick that I'm going to show you is, let's see, we're going to take, uh, there they are. The Deltas are my favorite Mavericks, if you didn't know that. Smaller warhead, but you can put triple ejector rack on those puppies. Request refueling. Request rearming. All right. Um, you probably already know that you can, in the A10 Tank Killer 2 expansion, you have to re manually load the page. Refueling complete. Oh, that was quick. Uh, but on the status page here, we are going to put the Dismiss. Okay. Because they're going to rearm this sucker and you're going to see what's happened. Well, if you've ever rearmed an A10 before, which I'm guessing you have, because you're probably at least somewhat proficient in the A-10 if you've ever been watching my videos, then you're going to realize we're going to have a mismatch when it's all said and done. And you got to reload your Dismiss. Rearming complete. Cool. So, interestingly enough... Huh. Normally... So you can see we've got three Mavericks loaded on either station there. But the Dismiss is saying, oh, look at that. There's only one Maverick. All right, well, that's obviously not fucking correct. So normally, Chuck's guy, which is actually incorrect here, will tell you to go ahead and push load all. Well, I'm going to tell you, fuck that noise. What I'm here to tell you what you can do is hit load Dismiss, and it'll reload just the fucking Dismiss. And it takes like a fraction of the time. Look, done already. That took like three seconds. A fraction of the time than it does to press load all. So that's the first thing you can fucking do. So... Tip number two, time hack. Uh, if you've ever flown an airplane in real life that has a digital control, the clock's actually remarkably similar. 
there's uh, 50 bajillion reasons why, excuse me, 50 bajillion reasons why you might need to use a timer, but if you need to do it, control, I'm sorry, you hit select, then control, and you can start a clock here. Press it again to stop, press it again to reset, and you press select, go back to the clock. Uh, you can also do it up here on the um, HUD. And the way you do that is you hit the hack button, which turns the time into a hack thing, and then you enter to start, and then enter to stop. I'm sorry, you hit hack to stop, make it go away. Hack, enter, and then hack. And then it goes right back again. So two different methods of doing that, pretty fucking sweet. Um, Oh, while we're up here on the HUD, if you're sick and tired of you're doing a low run or low level valley run through, you know, low terrain and you're sick and tired of hearing altitude, altitude, pull up, pull up, altitude, altitude. Well, you're still going to hear the pull up, but what you can do is go to the altitude alerter here and it'll show you 500 AGL floor. You can go ahead and reduce now come back here. You can go ahead and reduce that to whatever the fuck you want. You can also type in a number like 28. No, maybe not. 283. There we go. <laughs> but you can. Oh, no, it's down to. Oh, you can go to MSL floor. MS, I'm sorry. You can go to AGL floor, MSL floor, and ceiling even. And you can change those numbers for everything. Um, I prefer to make it basically nothing because getting too low is rarely an issue. Um, at least when I'm flying, I, if I'm flying that low level, it's, if you're flying a fast, a fast pointy fighter, I mean, that's one thing, but if you're flying an A-10, you're already low. I don't typically use the altitude alerter. So yeah, basically I'd zero that out if I were you. Let's see. Next tip. Oh, consent to release. So a couple things we can do here. If you take the if C menu and you, oh God, left click it. There we go. Test CCIP consent to release. I don't know if you ever used this before, but, uh, 5 mil and 3.9. 5 mil is more accurate than 3.9. Dude, let me tell you, fucking consent to release is goddamn fucking based. Now, if you're a, vi a Viper driver, you already know what this is because the Viper defaults to this. If you have a shallow angle, it does consent to release. And if you have a steep angle, it does regular CCIP. But consent to release is fucking awesome, and I love it. Basically, I'll show you when we're in flight. But basically what it does is it is like doing CCRP without having to set a speed. It's basically speedless CCRP. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second there. Um, next thing I want to talk about is hooking stuff. Uh, let's see if there's anything I can hook here. If you have a wingman or an, a friendly fighter, like your friend's covering you, well, <sighs> data link doesn't show you friendly player fighters, only friendly AI fighters. But what you can do is uh, dismiss down to make the hemic soy, and then you can TMS up short to hook something. Now, why would you want to hook something with the hemics? Because then it'll show you a little yellow line pointing to that thing at all times. So if you have a wingman or a friend or something like that you want to keep track of, hooking is super fucking handy. I recommend you do it. Next up. Um, you can, while we're here in the HUD menu, before I switch out of it, can come down to display modes and then you have a whole bunch of options here and maybe you've seen crash layobi's video on putting tapes you can have tapes like in an airliner for your speed and your altitude i don't really care for that much but what i do like is i love to have a vertical velocity and i like to have the radar altimeter also turned on which are very similar if you have if ever flown a helicopter um, so now you've got on the right here your vertical velocity indicator and you've got a nice little bar kind of like on the Apache for your radar altimeter which is very handy for those low level attacks that I love to do so much and you've still got your silly little MSL altitude over here but rather than looking at the radar altimeter you now have a nice little bar for your radar altimeter so I will probably default to that you'll see that on every single video from here on out that I do um, it'll be great once 
Eagle Dynamics finally releases their data cartridge and you can configure this stuff in a fucking menu and not have to do it every single time you fire up a goddamn mission. But that stuff is coming. Fuck, I need some more bourbon. I set it on the windowsill over here. If I'm looking to the right, that's why I'm setting my fucking bourbon on the windowsill. The more I drink this bourbon, the more I like it. Anyway, um, you can name your weapon profiles. So come down here to the Dismas. Go to profile. Oh, let's go to the Mark 82. And let's go to view profile. You can actually give it a name. Um, boop, not that one. You can go ahead and let's call it her. And where the fuck's the goddamn name? Oh, we gotta change settings first. There we go. We've gone and named it I I J I I I. We're gonna save that. So that's now the name of the profile. So I'll come up here to CCIP and. I, 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 J, I, I, J, 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 I. So you can name your weapons profiles. So if you're flipping through your weapons profiles, rather than have them be named something silly, like, uh, you know, Mark 82, it's like, oh, that's real fucking helpful, bro. You can name the weapons profiles. Maybe you have a CCIP profile for missile, or for rockets, rather, and a CCRP profile for rockets. Name it CCIP rocket. Name it CCRP rocket. Name it something silly. I don't fucking know. Um... Just might save you a quick second if you're scrolling through your profiles quickly and you want something that jumps off the page at you. I don't know. Your call. All right, what else? So I wanted to talk about changing height of function and RPM for cluster bombs. So the way you do that is to go into inventory and you actually have to reload the station and manually tell it what it is. So you go to CBU 87, you say it's a CBU, you say it's an 87, and then you can change the things here. So the point is, how you change the height of function and the RPM is done through typing the numbers here and then putting them in here, and then you load it to load the correct uh, store to the station. That's how you change the height of function RPM. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into that because I plan on doing an entire fucking video on cluster bombs because they're fucking awesome and biasing brick mids and whatnot. But just so you know, that is how you change it because you might be a little confused if you come to the Dismiss and you go to CBU87. When I go to Profile, you can see that the height of function and the RPM is listed there. But if you come up and go to try to change settings, you're like, what the fuck, man? I can't change the height of function or the rate of uh, the height of function or the RPM. The reason for that is because you have to reload the station in order to do that, which is kind of annoying because I know the pointy boys, like the F18, and the F16 can change those things in their regular stores management page, which is annoying that we're not able to and we have to load the entire fucking thing over again. But whatever. Price of being fucking awesome. Uh, okay, so let's get in the air and continue the video and I'll be right back with you. So the next thing I wanted to go over is uh, in a previous video I had, and you can see the radar altimeter bar working pretty well and my vertical speed bar working pretty well. That's how that works. But uh, the bar being right there is a little easier to use when you're religiously staring at your fucking radar altimeter. Um, but in a previous video, I had a guy correct me in the comments. Dude, I'm really sorry. I don't remember your name. You had an F-15 in your profile picture. I think you were uh, a professional video maker. And so I appreciate you watching my video and correcting me. But basically he said forward is for a flare and aft on the CMS is for a chaff. But right dump six chaff and left dump six flare. That's pretty fucking cool. Uh, because if you're panicking like me, like I don't really use the profiles, but holy shit, there's a fucking man pad. Being able to jump, just dump fucking flares like a madman because you're scared out of your fucking mind actually is really fucking cool. So, that's a cool thing to. What happened to my view here? God damn. That's better. Um, so, yeah, that's cool to know. Uh, if you're being shot at by something radar based or you just mash that to the right, or if you're, you see a man pad and you're not sure where it's going, you can start mashing left and just spew out flares like a madman. Um, and then long, I'm um, sorry, it's uh, forward long, and aft long is how you switch profiles, and then slight press is how you start the profile. 
and short press again so you stop it and then long press so you turn the jammer on so I have that all wrong thank you for correcting me I appreciate being corrected unlike some people who get really upset when they're corrected but when I'm wrong I'm wrong and I admit when I'm wrong and I was wrong and I appreciate you correcting me and thank you for that so moving right along uh, oh yeah pod reset so why is the goddamn TGP off I thought the TGP was on well now I have to arm do I have a TGP fucking oh Jesus Christ Oh, I don't have a TGP. God damn it. Why do I suck so much? Fuck me. You know, fuck this shit. I'm out. I'm getting the fuck out of this goddamn A10. Where's my fucking ejection handle? Fuck this. I'm out. Bye. Oh, yes. I have an ejection handle now. Um, I plan on making a video on how I did it. But in the meantime, uh, yeah. Ejection handle. I suck. I'm the worst. Anyway. Why you would have a mission without a targeting pod. Request rearming. I will never understand. Copy. It's just fucking rude, you know? Like. <sighs> right, so we have a pod now. We'll talk about some stuff in a minute. Um, oh, so let's say that you, mm, let's go white hot. Let's say that you're making a um, SPI on something. Let's say we're making it on, oh, that building will do. Now, I think I talked in one of my previous videos about how it's important to aim at the ground below the target. Um, what you can do that I just learned, first off, you know how much I love INR mode in the pod. Go to point mode to lock onto the target. Now, before you make the speed, what you can do is turn the laser on. You see the L's flashing, so the laser's on. Make your mark point and then turn the laser off. If you use the laser to range your mark point, it'll automatically create the mark point or the speed in this case, or whatever, whatever you want to make directly below on the ground in the database by what you laze by using the laser as a range finder. I learned that from a chuck guide, extremely fucking handy. So rather than aiming at the bottom of the tank treads of the tank you're trying to blow up, you can just use the point track to go ahead and perfectly lock onto the tank with the point track using contrast, turn your laser on, make the mark point, turn the laser off, and now it'll make a mark point precisely in the middle of that tank at the ground level. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. Moving right along. Hmm. Ah, uh, God, I'm not gonna demo this one because it's a fucking pain in the ass to demo, but how many times have you gone and released the pickle button too early when you have a hung store? What you can do, oh, I don't have any loaded up right now. If you get a hung store message because you didn't hold the pickle button down long enough, what you can do is reload the store from the inventory page, like so. And if you do that, you can clear the hung store message. So if you get a hung store, the weapon is not lost. You can get it back, and that's how you do it. So I oh, thought that was interesting. Oh, gun elevation. I need to go to the mountain for this. So. The, I learned, well, I was always wondering with myself, I'm going to pause it here for a second. I've always wondered, how does the A-10 compute that continuously com calculated impact point? Does it use, because the pointy boys use radar or use laser range finding. I think the hair uses the laser range finder. How do you know where those bullets are going to land, A-10? What kind of dark magic do you use to figure that out? Turns out what the A-10 uses is a terrain database. It knows the elevation of all terrain around the entire fucking world. And it does some trigonometry algorithm bullshit to figure out where the bullet's going to land. Now, the unfortunate part of that is that if the target is above your elevation, like let's say there's a tank up on the top of that hill there, and we're coming to shoot it, and we're coming from a low level. It's like, oh shit, there's that tank up on that hill. Oh, fuck me, we get a CCIP invalid message, which you can do 
is use, uh, there we go. You can use this gun cross. It's a fixed one to, let's see where it hits. There you go. Pretty accurate, actually, to shoot things at a higher elevation if you know how far away they are. Not too shabby. Or you could just climb up an altitude and make sure that you are aiming from a downward point to get a realistically calculated continuous impact pull up, point pull up. like so like we're going to shoot that house right there altitude altitude we go fuck you pull up pull up obviously ccip is a lot more accurate so there's that if you ever wondered why that is oh so next thing we're going to get into maverick we're going to put the dismiss over here on the right page All right, so I fucked this up in my video before. Um, basically, I talked about bore sighting the targeting pod. Uh, by the way, I'm flying a real mission right now because I'd rather fly a real mission than re-record in a sterile environment. Might as well kill two birds with one stone. I'm currently... Oh, Jesus Christ, what is that? Something's launched on me. I think that's just a missile from a SAM site. But I'm with my good friend Dan. Say hi, Dan. Hi. Dan is here. He's flying an F-16... Uh, somewhere. But anyway, real quick and dirty. Uh, I bound OSB2 and OSB3 to air to ground mode for the pod and standby mode for the pod rather than the bore sight because it's easier than bore sighting it because it resets your FOV as well. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, missile step in the Maverick. So China Hat Aft will re-cage the Maverick Seeker, but then China Hat Aft again will actually cycle between missiles, and you might have to hit it a couple of times, but it'll eventually switch to the other station, so if you don't want to shoot all your Mavericks off of... Is that a 31 shooting at me? No, it's not. I don't know what that is. Uh, lost my train of thought. So if you don't want to you don't want to keep shooting all your Mavericks off one station, unbalancing your A-10, you can missile step with uh, China Hat Aft. So there's that. Anyway, that's all. So, speaking of the Maverick, uh, Wags did a video on this, but the problem is um, if you have, oh, it's locking onto everything. If you are using the Maverick, and it's moving around, and you can't get it to hold still, what you can do is hold DMS up long and it'll enter space stabilization mode. And what that does is it stops the left and right moving around. It'll still drift forward and backwards, but it'll stop the left and right drifting, which is fucking amazing. Now, I still prefer to use the T-Pod to create a speed and then slave all to speed with the Maverick. It's just a little quicker for me. But if you're trying to quick draw the Maverick and ripple a bunch off, DMS up long is how you do that, and it's really fucking cool. It's called gyro stabilization. Uh, and I think that's about all I've got for you. Video's a little clunky, you know. I just wanted to make a fucking video. I just want to drink some bourbon and fly the goddamn A10. Um, I got some really cool things in the works for you. I'm gonna make a video tutorial about how I made my USB ejections handle, which is pretty sweet. Um, I'm gonna make a video on the ARC-210, because the guy has been requesting that, and no one's really released a guide about that. The A-10 flight manual does not um, detail the ARC-210, and Chuck's guide still says work in progress, so I guess I'll do a fucking video on the ARC-210. And uh, I could plan on continuing the Agile Spear campaign. So, thank you for watching my video. I don't give a fuck if you like or subscribe. You know how the deal is. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm sorry, it's a lot of fun to eject when you have a real actual ejection handle instead of reaching for control E three times. It's fucking sweet, man. Alright, for real this time, bye.